I saw firsthand how British troops were outnumbered, overstretched and under-equipped in one of their biggest battles against the Taliban in southern Afghanistan. The situation here is getting quite critical. Right, turn the wagons round, let's get ready to go back out. On dispatches tonight, the story of the Battle of Garam, sir, a six-day battle the Ministry of Defence didn't want you to see. A battle that raises questions about Britain's war on terror in Afghanistan. Seventeen British troops, 100 Afghan soldiers and police, plus a contingent of eight Estonians, began the assault on the strategic town of Garamsa in Helmand province. The British are part of an OMLT, an operational mentoring and liaison team. Their job is to train and support the new Afghan army. The British commander was hoping the operation would be a quick one. We'd uh, like to uh, uh, try and get this operation concluded uh, today, but uh, fighting uh, this kind of battle, um, there are plenty of unknowns. We don't know how many Taliban are, are in the area at the moment. We don't know how well fortified uh, those pos the positions that they hold are, um, or indeed whether any um, uh, booby traps or uh, what, what we call IEDs um, are around. So that could slow our progress. The Ministry of Defence had banned me from travelling with the soldiers at the very last minute. They were no doubt concerned that their peacekeeping mission wasn't going that well and had, in fact, now turned into a war. I got round that by hitching a ride with the Afghan National Police instead, in a white luxury jeep. I soon regretted it. Oh, now we're driving along a ridge way. Should we get out? Driving along the ridge and came under fire. I had to get out of the car. These trenches, the Taliban were in these trenches about half an hour ago, an hour ago. And now we're in them. They're firing at us. Well, today is the fifth anniversary of 9 11 the 11th of September, and five years after we were supposed to have deposed the Taliban and defeated Al-Qaeda. Here I am, sitting in a trench. The Taliban are counter-attacking. The British forces are in the most intense fighting ever. They've been in since the end of Korea, and that includes the Falklands and Iraq. And I think it's best to keep moving. We took up a position on a small hill overlooking the town to get a better view of the battle being fought ahead of us. Just stopped filming and a rocket hit our position. Bullets flying all around us. thought this little area was clear. Just got hit a second time, it's 
someone's screaming. Corporal Anthony Cowley is the team's medic. The Afghan National Army are volunteers, but only get six weeks training from the British. We moved off again. The ANA set fire to outlying houses to flush out the Taliban, while the National Police, or ANP, swept behind clearing the fields. We must leave 10 AMP yeah. to look after the bridge with vehicles. Okay. Although the British were supposed to be acting in a supporting role, Captain Doug Beatty had to take charge of the Afghan forces almost from the start. Yeah. Hard going, I see. Huh? Close calls are. Yeah. We, I, we've got fire on that ridge and then had to jump off. Yeah, well, we, we've, we've had a few near misses with RPG. And then what were those? Were those rockets or RPGs flying over our heads? Uh, when we were... RPG. RPG. Um, the only problem we've got is with the force of the Taliban infiltrating back across here. Yeah. That's why I've come back, just to get the, uh, the ANA and the AMP to secure the bridge here so they can't get in behind us. Right. Once we get into the district centre, they'll find themselves pretty much cut off and they'll have to withdraw. OK. So... If they were here, they were firing quite close, I don't... Yeah. Right. Very close. Very close. But, um, yeah, I'll shoot up now. Good luck. Catch you later, Sean. Okay, we come under fire. And I was taking a photo. <laughs> this is good. <laughs> I'd hate to see what's bad. <sighs> nice to meet you. Where are you from? Kabul, Jalalabad, Kuna? Kabul. Kabul? Yeah. Where are you from? I'm Kuna. Kuna? Yeah. I like Kuna. Yeah. Don't know why, it seems a good idea to introduce yourself people you're pinned down with. Sean. Sean. I like Kuna. It's beautiful. Oh, my bag. I wanted to get to the British vehicles, but my path was blocked by a seemingly impenetrable wall of noise. The incoming round sounded like Chinese firecrackers as they broke the sound barrier. The British held their ground, deliberately drawing fire so they could locate the Taliban positions and lay down mortars. These vehicles are unarmored. I looked over just in time to see a bullet go through one of the Land Rovers. The British commander called in airstrikes to bomb the Taliban. We've now got close air support. Post these Harriers just fly a few feet above the ground, twisting and turning. Last night, the ANP were talking about a thousand Taliban 
in Garamsey. And the British soldiers said, well, they didn't know, but they suspected that was an exaggeration. The, whoever, however many there are, they're putting up a big fight. The Afghan army paused to take care of their dead. Some of the friends of the dead soldier, Afghan National Army soldier behind me, I met them last night and even this morning. They look really eager and up for the fight. I'm quite happy. But everyone's looking really exhausted now. Their faces covered in sand. And they're sitting there with their dead friend. The airstrikes cleared the path ahead and we moved on to Gamsa. The town is strategically important because it's near the border with Pakistan and is a key supply route of the Taliban into Afghanistan. Are they supposed to be still in time? I don't know. That's what we're trying to find out. Right. Hopefully they've left. They come out. treatment on there. I did. Did you like it? Yeah. You said it as well at the beginning. You, got, you said before we left. We'll cover the eastern bridge all the way to the south. Happy days. We've got uh, Paddy and Doug going into town to confirm how much the district centre we own. And they're taking all the uh, magnets with them. Do you swing on through? Hi. <laughs> Happy days. <laughs> I finally got a close look at the faces of the men I'd been following into battle. It was time to move on. The town had been cleared of Taliban and the Afghan police were able to move back into their headquarters. We drove to the district centre and set up camp for the night. We can use, uh, no Having survived the day, I now gathered round with the unit, a Sergeant Major Johnston calling the men for a debrief. They've done an outstanding job. Everyone in Kandahar sends a praises and says you're outstanding. Well done. However, it's all worth nothing. We didn't achieve tonight and tomorrow morning. But that's it. From then, well done. But long night ahead. Prepare for 107s and mortars at a ready rate. The Taliban control everything south of Gamsa, down to the Pakistan border, and had been firing 107 rockets and mortars into the town every night for months. We were all on edge. The British and Afghan forces had achieved their objective. Gamsa had been retaken, but it was going to be a long night. I was with 17 British soldiers and the Afghan army as they fought the Taliban in the Battle of Gamsa. We had been due to pull out by now. What are we doing today? We're just pulling out. We're carrying on further south. Um, keep going. The task yesterday was to, uh, to, clear, the, to clear the town, which we've done, um, and then push further south so that we can stop the, uh, the problem was before. The, the problem was before that we were getting more, the town was just getting mortared on a, you know, daily and nightly. Uh, so if we can push them far enough down and push their mortars far enough back, then it makes this place more secure. Um, so we're going to push down and get some uh, AMP checkpoints put in down there to stop the Taliban fil uh, filtering back up and, uh, and actually give us a, a sort of front line further forward in the front of this town. You look forward to today? <laughs> Is that a joke? <laughs> okay, don't worry about it. Yeah, I'm fine. Yeah. I was a bit disappointed when I heard him say we're going to stay here again tonight. I'm hoping 
Uh, yeah, I had my socks, kind of my morale boot really hit. We have to get all the ticks in the box today, otherwise we can't. So we may be able to get back. Yeah, otherwise the whole the whole area will fall again. Right. We headed off, but only reached the edge of town before mortars pinned us down again. We are uh, taking incoming fire, uh, heavy incoming fire, uh, from the east, uh, from uh, our eastern boundary, uh, Rochester Fire. Uh, we are taking increasingly accurate mortar fire uh, on our western boundary and our western uh, move uh, advance is ground to a halt. Uh, we need some uh, air to try and uh, uh, get this, uh, uh, get some uh, forward momentum again, over. I asked one of the British soldiers about the last time they'd been pinned down. I was in quite a bad contact in Sangin and uh, my ear was damaged for about four or five days. What, when you went on patrol, you got hit, or when you were in the base? Um, we um, we got hit when we went out on patrol. Well, we was going to recover a downed um, UAP. That was quite close. Where did that one? <laughs> I don't know why I'm asking. I don't... <laughs> I'm asking how intense it was in Sangin, just as a mortar flies over our head. Yesterday, we were taking the fight to them. It feels like they're dug in and they're firing at us today quite accurately. The first casualties of the day were brought in. How are you looking, um, Not good. Um, he's bleeding with him. Um, basically, gunshot wounds gone into, his, into the air cavities. Um, he's bleeding into his, into his lungs. Um, we need to be quick with the evacuation. He needs a chest strain when he gets into, into hospital. If we're not quick, we're going to have to go in here. I don't want to do that here. I don't, we don't want to have to do that. It's OK. It's OK. It's going to be OK. It'll be all right. Stay away. Be all right. Two other Afghans were less seriously injured. The Medivac helicopter took the casualties to Camp Bastion, the main British base in Helmand. The British were sent to war in Afghanistan with only eight Chinook helicopters, so they were always in short supply. As the mortar attack continued, a few of us pulled back to a former agricultural college on the outskirts of the town. The rest of the team had got up to the canal ridge, just a few hundred yards in front, and were now taking fire from three sides. How do you keep your energy up, though? Because I'm completely... Yesterday, I got so pumped full of adrenaline, it was fine. I was ducking and diving and running around. Today I'm all over the shop. <coughs> I mean, yes, you might, I mean, yeah. You do have your moments where you feel low, but as soon as you hear that incoming round light, yeah, it wakes you up a bit. It wakes you up, like your adrenaline starts pumping again until the next lull, and you put into a sense of security and you start dozing off. It is the lulls, though, gets yeah. a bit. Has he just received incoming? Um, excuse me. Yeah. <laughs> just gone down there. Yeah. These Estonians are pretty much all that NATO could muster to help the British in Helmand. Well, when you go home and you talk about what you've gone through, Do you, your normal person doesn't really no. understand. You try to explain it 
to the best you can. Uh, no matter how hard you try, they don't they don't understand. No. Do you talk about it with your wife? Yes. Yeah, I've, I've, uh, I'm going to went back an hour and a half. Uh, she knew I'd been ambushed up in Sangin. Right. Uh, so they said, uh, yeah, I, I broke down really on the phone to her right. saying, you know, what happened. I think that's necessary, though, yeah. to let um, steam. And she said, well, have you spoken to anyone about it? I said, only you. I said, well, let's sit down and have a chat then. I right. had a couple of glasses of wine, or, you know, pour my heart out, really. Right. Oh, uh, you went home on the uh, On R&R, &R, yeah. On oh, leave, good, OK. Two weeks leave. Um, I just sat there and chatted and that, you know, and I felt a lot better for it afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. More casualties were brought in from the canal ridge. I soon lost count. A medevac helicopter was urgently needed, but the only one available had been sent elsewhere. No, it's nothing else. I've seen these men desperately. Well, he did medical care desperately. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're getting all casualties. It's so much, only so much well, these two can do. Roger that. Okay. The helicopter had been called away as another British unit had just hit a mine. That's not here, though, in this field of operations. No, it's not, no. It's, um, it's a while, um, I'm not quite sure where it is, but it was um, it sent through on the radios. Right. Uh, that's caught the tail end of it. But it means that uh, they were called before I called for this, so it may have made a call. Uh, no, for uh, evacuation for the casualty here. Yeah. So it might take a while for, um, for that to turn up. Right. And it's multiple mine strike? Uh, yeah, there are a number of casualties. Right. Uh, I don't know the uh, severity of those or the numbers. Finally, we're getting some sustained air support. There's two Apache helicopters and an A-10 tank buster. Apache and A-10 tank buster. And I think maybe B-1. B-1? Maybe yeah. higher up. It's a disturbing sound, but bizarrely very welcome because we've been on the ground now for eight hours stuck here. They're going in to sort them out because they're all Taliban have dug in just beyond that mosque. Looks like the A-10 is going in for another dive now. I've never heard such noise. To our ears, at least it sounds good. It's a good sound. Obviously not if you're on the other side. But to be honest, you're not really concerned about the other side when you're getting shot at and mortared. the ground. They've been there for months and they've got quite well prepared positions. So it's taking an awful lot of shit. Um, whereas yesterday, this is virtually new ground for them, or newish ground. Oh, I see. And we could shift them off it pretty close, uh, pretty easily. But uh, it's much more difficult getting them out of uh, entrenched positions. Um, and they're not running away today at all. They're fighting to the last. So the guys are, the uh, AMP are having to fight really room to room, house to house. Uh, and it's taking a while. It's another long day. Yeah, another long day. Hey guys, get another one in here. Right. Somebody else in here. Come on. I tell you. Say, no one in the sin. Yeah, fine, come on. you go. A wounded Taliban fighter had been captured and was brought in for medical oh, treatment. Sorry, yeah, I'll give it to you before I hand him over the A&A. Yeah. Right, so that way we can get him clean and start for the same. 
medical care to anybody else. Once we've done that, keep them under constant bit. Observation. Right, turn the wagons round, let's get ready to go back out. The word quickly spread to the Afghan army that there was a Taliban prisoner back at the compound. Just make sure that nobody gets to him, gets the same medical care, and keep the, f the A&A open, right? Because I know they want to kill him, but... That guy gets medical treatment first, before anything else. The A&E commander's coming now, that guy gets medical treatment first, before he gets abused. No. The A&E are on the way now. Was it better? I can speak to No, no. Why no? Because he gets medically treated first. Okay, okay, okay. You meet the doctor, then you can speak to him. Okay? Okay. 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 Hopefully the resupply will come tonight by helicopter. Uh, each item, yes. I have gone crazy. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay, so hopefully we have enough, enough for maybe three or four more days. Uh -huh. so. Are we now pretty much running out of things? Yeah. It would be very difficult now to uh, sustain a, a really bad P1 country. Are we low on ammunition? There's some items that people would like more of. Enough to survive another day. No, no, no. That's I'll say an update, but it could be a couple of hours. Yeah. No. Sergeant Major, they're going to resupply us by helicopter, so they Don't know. We can't but ask. They'd never get here if they were to drive us. No. And, uh, I don't, we thought this would be sort of done and dusty by now, so... All depends with the aviation assets, sir. No, no luck. They won't. Yeah, yeah. They just have to hang on what we've got. Because we're the old melty. <laughs> we just get screwed. <laughs> the men were being briefed by Paddy Williams after another long day spent under fire up on the canal. OK. At the moment, uh, Captain Beatty's down by the, uh, the second canal bridge, which is just down here, where I think some of you guys joined him earlier on. Uh, the AMP are going to secure that bridge, both sides of it. All over Helmand, other British soldiers were facing the same problems. There simply weren't enough men or supplies to go around. The a and or the remnants of them, there aren't that many of them, I question is where they've gone. Um, but they're going to be occupying that series of buildings up there. The eastern flank's pretty secure, and we've got word there in numbers. It's just the west that needs uh, a bit of attention. Our, um, our I looked at their faces and saw how the fighting had taken its toll. We can actually do something uh, from here. If we're down here, we're just pinned down. Yeah. And, uh, and most of the time, we can't even bring our weapons to bear. So. Anyway, um, so that's us. We need to be ready to react, basically, uh, throughout the night to push down, <coughs> at the very least, get eyes on. The casualties were finally evacuated, but the new supplies hadn't arrived. The soldiers gathered all the ammunition they could. They're getting out all the anti-tank missiles because there's still a lot of Taliban who are expecting a lot of incoming tonight. And they're just seeing how much munitions they've got. This is our second night here in Garamse. And there's a dying Taliban prisoner behind us who they're giving medical aid to. We're pulling out, Dougie. 
Sorry? Are we pulling out? No. No. No, we're staying. We're staying. <laughs> you wish we were you wish we were pulling out, let me tell you. I'm not laughing at the moment. No, though. well we're here for twenty-four hours and this is three days so far, so no, we're gonna be we're gonna be here for a while, I think. Um, but if you need to pull out, Sean, you just come and see me and say, hey, we need to go now, and uh, I'll get all the guys to shoot off. Get, get a helicopter to take me. All right. Yeah. So when I'm ready to go, you'll all leave. Yeah? You're just waiting for me. That's what, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I didn't tell you. you but you said to us when we saw this here, you, we're only here for your, uh, your, your, your personal protection. <laughs> um, and the other 100 AMP and ANA are here to do their own thing. <laughs> so we're here for you. So we'll, the minute you say we can go, just, just, okay. just let us know and we'll, we'll shoot I'm about off. ready to go, actually. <laughs> yeah. I was ready to go two days ago. <laughs> Instead, Dougie got ready to head back up to the canal. Overnight, Taliban reinforcements had crossed over from Pakistan and were now dug in. This is a school inside here, and I just saw something incredible. Look at this. This is something the school children drew before the school was occupied by the Taliban. And there's um, the river of Garamse, and there are cars and houses and trees. Have a look at one of these cars. Up on the canal, Dougie had run into trouble. Roger, we're also taking small arms craft on the eastern side of the canal in the area of the red of one, three, eight. Four, two, two. The so Dougie's is coming under fire, quite serious fire again. Yes, he is, yeah. He's just been engaged um, from, um, from both sides of the canal, if you like. We heard there was a British casualty. I headed up there with the Estonian medical team to retrieve him. heavy fire, RPG and machine gun fire, and all the AMP were running along the ridge. We've got a British casualty. I was almost hit myself. <laughs> Gunshot wound to lower forearm. Um, got to him very pale. Cold and clammy, just the initial shock, I think. Um, we need to assess him again, check him all over for uh, potentially an exit wound. So I'm just filming. If you don't, you won't. Only, you'll only go on TV if you want. Otherwise, you can give it to a wife. More than 40 British soldiers have lost their lives so far in Afghanistan, and thousands of Afghans have been killed. The situation here is getting quite critical. Uh, we've, uh, the advance has stalled uh, and encountered quite heavy resistance. Uh, the ANA have taken uh, fairly heavy casualties. Their commander was killed, uh, and they have uh, three uh, uh, serious casualties who we're trying to get back to uh, back to my location to, uh, to be treated. Uh, the AMP have already suffered a casualty, and essentially we are back now uh, to the 4-3 Northern, um, while Kaz is called in. Um, but at the moment, unless we get AH on station for a reasonable amount of time, um, we're not going to be able to move this forward, and uh, this is just going to become a bit of a stalemate. Okay. Helicopter. Just one entry. Nice Just one entry. Just get him on there. That's all it is. Just, Just one. Okay. Okay. Before we must put a yeah. tunicat and go out. Hello. 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 
Give me one. Have a What? <laughs> See you back home, Joe. Good luck. Yeah, sure. Take care. Yeah, bye, mate. You in? Yeah, yeah I'm yeah, on. Go on. Behind, go. It was the end of the third day, and the push forward had stalled. The Afghan army had stopped fighting, food and ammunition were running low, and we had begun stripping the fields of corn. The Taliban don't have such problems with resupply. Um, the Taliban pretty much control everything to the south of us, apart from the bit that we've just cleared all the way down to the Pakistan border in a place called Baramcha. Uh, and they use that to put their, 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 their manpower across, their weapons across, um, for their poppy yield to go across so they can get money to, to, to finance their, their operations. That's their, their main supply routes. Um, and they have pretty much free access and free movement down there. Um, so it's easy for them to resupply men. South from here is Taliban territory. So in six months' time, or a year's time, will this town we hold it? Oh, go on, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah oh, absolutely. Um, it's it's going to be fought for time and time again. Um, um, I don't think we're going to lose it again. It's too important to lose again. I think everybody can see the importance of it, and it, so it's not going to be lost again. Um, but that doesn't say it's going to be an easy time here. It's going to be a hard fought. No matter which way you look at it, and whether it's politically correct to say that or not, I'm not too sure. Um, but, but somebody who's been in the army for 25 years, this is a war zone. And there's, there's no two ways of looking at it. The, the, the things that we've got, though, what we have to do is we have to make an Afghan solution to the problem that we have here. After a day's fighting, the soldiers spent all night dealing with casualties. Um, the um, last <laughs> team just heard that um, the Taliban were coming to attack the district centre tonight. <laughs> Say again. I said. <laughs> and that's about it. Um, however, we get that sort of thing through quite a lot, so okay. it, it don't, it's no, no change from any any other time. Right. It was going to be another long, sleepless night. I require prednisolone medication. I say again, two times non-rebreathable masks to go with the oxygen cylinders. <laughs> and we were supposed to be pulled out now. What do they say? When are we going to be pulled out? No, two times there's some sort of security masks. threat. Prednisolone, I spell Papa Romeo. Echo, Delta, Delta, extraction November, put back India, 72 hours. Sierra, Alpha, we uh, make, we make come out Austria, longer, it might be Echo, shorter. It depends on how long security is and get this one series has. We are getting resupplied with rations and ammo, which are going through at a fast rate. The men are now having to wash their filthy socks, and I haven't got a pair of socks on at the moment, so I've run through mine, and I'm just washing them. Last one, is it Dougie up there? Yeah. This is the last. The last one was the last one. What's this happened there? The uh, ANA, we tried to put them forward to, uh, to man a checkpoint, um, and they've been engaged from an uh, from enemy position just off to the... Uh, to the uh, western flank, so we're just going to go up there, see if we can get eyes on, call in some uh, close air support, um, clear them out so we can get the checkpoint in. It's important that we get this checkpoint in because it's a choke point for all vehicular movement, uh, so we're just going to go and do that now. Once again, the guys are having to go out onto the canal. There's a little canal over there where there's Taliban dug in on all three sides. So every time they go out there, and they're going out three, four times a day, they're getting hit from three sides with RPGs, small arms fire and mortar. And it's incredible to see their determination because they were supposed to be pulled out of here three days ago and we were told we were being pulled out yesterday. 
that reinforcements were coming. But the latest news is that there are no reinforcements coming. I heard the Afghans and the British soldiers were about to achieve their final objective, so I hitched a ride up to the canal. I couldn't help feeling that here was Britain's grandiose foreign policy laid bare. Two unarmoured Land Rovers on a ridge taking fire. If either had been hit, the strategically vital town of Garmsay could have been lost to the Taliban once more. Because they're still in the wood line over there. Yep. And in front of you and then to the left. Yep, they're everywhere. <laughs> still, after three days of bombing, they're still there. Awesome. I just seen the back side of coming in. Did you see that? Yeah, far now, far motors now, over the top, in depth. 74 Bravo, 74 Bravo, this is uh, Widow 77. Uh, Widow 77, seven. Uh, I can confirm uh, objective is clear and they are now clearing along the stream there and the way they came and came all of the buildings that we bypassed on the western side, right so far over. Guys, back up, bring it forward with a gun. What I'm after, Steve, as you come down, you'll break into the open. If you look to your left, you'll see a tree line swinging off away from you at the edge of the tree line I want you to engage with the 50 cal. He has achieved as much as he's going to achieve. We have no more to support him with, so he's totally best. He's cleared what he can to come back now. Tell him he must do it in an orderly manner. Tell him he must do it orderly. Not to run back, but patrol back. We own this ground. This is our ground. How do I get in? Oh, just come over the top here. Right there, stick his thumb in the room. Sorry if I kick you. Don't worry. Dougie. Yeah? It's my last tape. Is this your last tape? I want the whole thing wrapped up before the tape ends. Well, here, well here's a one for you. Um, they they finally achieved their objective here for 24 hours. Four days later, they finally got there. Did they do it, really? Yeah, they did, yeah. When they Where, where they got to was their objective. They've swung wow. around now, right now. They can't go any further south. There's far too many Taliban. You can, yeah. you heard the fire yourself. Yeah. But uh, they worked hard, achieved their objective. Brilliant. So that's good. It's good yeah. effort. All we have to be careful of now is they've infiltrated along the eastern flank of the canal. Right. Careful of ambushes to the right. OK. You keep your head down. Dougie was right. We were ambushed. And just when we needed it most, the 50 calibre gun jammed. Not for the first time that week. The British government had hoped not a single shot would have to be fired by British troops. But in just one week, these men had called in a record number of airstrikes, 57 in all, and fired a record number of rounds. We were in the cornfields picking corn yesterday, last night. But look what's just arrived. And the soldiers are in just ogling this bag. I want to show you this. Pop tarts, oranges, beef jerky, a bottle of hot sauce, and some cakes. What a beautiful sight it is. <laughs> and I think that's a measure of how <laughs> shit it is being out here. But we were just looking at that as though it was all our Christmases had come true.
Come on, get in. Come on, get in. Okay. What do we say? Garam say. Okay. <laughs> One, two, three. Garam say. <laughs> At last, it was time to go home. Having achieved the final objective, we prepared to pull out. But then we heard the bad news. Do you know what's happening? Yeah. Yeah. Um, the, uh, the, 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 A and the A and A are pulling out um, tomorrow morning, um, along with the, the omelets. It's going to be a small contingent of, uh, of uh, um, ISAF forces staying behind until about midday tomorrow. That's myself and Paddy and, and the Estonians. Right. Um, and then, uh, and then we will leave at some time, about 12 o'clock tomorrow. The problem that we have is because um, CAF uh, Kandahar isn't supporting us with the follow-on actions here. Um, the AMP. What's CAF? Sorry, that's the headquarters. That's the headquarters in Kandahar. Um, because they're not following us, up, following on and supporting what the ANA and AMP have achieved here, um, the AMP can't hold this place, uh, and they're going to leave um, at the same time we leave. Yeah. Um, so after six days fighting, uh, we're going to give this place back to the Taliban, and that's pretty hard to swallow at this moment in time. Uh, so yeah. not too hard. Looks like the ANA are pulling out, uh -huh. and the ANP are pulling out as well. Mm -hmm which means there'll be no one here to defend Garamso. Big mistake. Massive mistake. Um, they, need, they do need the foundations of um, troops here to, to protect this area. Um, as you've seen yesterday, there's been people that have been moving back into the houses. But how um, does it make you feel knowing, presumably, if, he, if we all pull out? I've wasted so many days. It's to be, all been a waste, a massive waste. And it makes me quite demoralised to, 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 to feel that um, you know, I've given these soldiers a lot of medical support and, and now we're pulling out of somewhere that could, if this is true, that could potentially fall again. Oh, it's gutting, man. Yeah. Is that really going to happen? The, the A&P have said it, that they're going to pull out, and so now Paddy is trying to convince them otherwise. It's ridiculous. A few of the British remained behind, so the Afghan police agreed to stay. Dougie felt let down by the military command. But I felt they had both been let down by the lack of support from the government back home. Garmster is still surrounded by the Taliban and under siege. We had won the battle. Three of the men received medals for outstanding bravery, but it felt like we were losing the war.